Thank you, John. Thank you to KCA for the invitation. And the question here is, uh, which is the ideal sonitrin patient? And I think that uh, the uh, key word here is patient. Because we have to realize that uh, this one is an advanced uh, kidney cancer patient, as it is uh, the other case. But of course, these two clinical uh, scenarios are completely different one from the other. And we have also to realize that uh, taking into account uh, the patient characteristics, we speak about uh, disease-related characteristics, such as the number and size of metastatic uh, um, sites, the presence of asymptomatic or asymptomatic disease, the histology, of course, and the uh, risk group classification, either with the MSKCC or HANS criteria. But we have also patient-related characteristics that are definitely quite important. For example, age, of, of course, performance status, the presence of comorbidities. But we have also treatment-related characteristics. For example, previous treatments, if any, but also the realistic treatment, treatment aim, because sometimes we have to go for a huge tumor shrinkage, other times we just want to preserve quality of life with all the other options in between. So several years ago, with a few friends, we designed this kind of patient-focused approach to treatment, identifying several features, several characteristics related to disease, to the patient, and to the treatment. And then we tried to find uh, the evidence supporting the use uh, of uh, any given drugs in, in the field of kidney cancer to find the ideal treatment for each different clinical scenario. And I tried to do the same today with sunitinib. And indeed, uh, going through the literature and using sunitinib and kidney cancer, I was able to retrieve more than 1,000 papers, just reflecting the fact that the sunitinib is out on the market since 2006, 2007, depending on countries. And so we gather a huge experience with this drug. And trying to look for the evidence in favor or against sunitinib in the different scenarios I tried to code color the different options. With green, I indicated the strong evidence in favor of sunitinib use. With yellow, no data in favor or against those gray areas of treatment choices. And in red, strong evidence against. But considering that life is not black or white, I consider also moderate evidence in favor and also moderate evidence against. And trying to do this exercise, this is exactly what uh, went out. Of course, I'm not going to go deeply through each of the different characteristics and uh, through the different evidence supporting or not the use of sunitinib in each of these subgroups. But nevertheless, I'm going to present you data relative to some of these features that are, in my opinion, particularly uh, relevant. And let's start to the indication of sunitinib according to disease-related characteristics. These are the results of the exercise I made, but I want to go a little bit uh, into details, uh, talking about uh, the indication of sunitinib use in poorest patients, in patients with bone and brain metastasis, and in patients with non-clear cell histologies. Let's start with poor risk. These are the, uh, this is the subgroup analysis of the registrative trial sunitinib versus interferon, clearly showing that uh, even though the overall amount of benefit in poorest patient is lower as compared to patients with uh, more favorable uh, features, uh, nevertheless, uh, the advantage of sunitinib over interferon is maintained also in poorest patients meaning that uh, we can use sunitinib in poorest patients, taking especially into account that the poor risk doesn't mean necessarily poor performance status. Let's move to bone metastasis. This is a paper published by Cesaris Cesar Chilik and his group, 
clearly showing, for example, that uh, if you take into account the activity of the two oldest tyrosine kinase inhibitors, sunitin and sorafenib, then there is a clear-cut evidence of a superior activity of sunitinib as compared to sorafenib for the treatment of uh, bone metastasis in terms of time to progression of pre-existing bone lesions and time to progression uh, as uh, the occurrence of novel bone lesions. What about brain mass? Again, we have the subgroup analysis of the global expanded assets program, clearly showing that we can achieve benefit also in these difficult to treat patients. This is a case from Stefano Dard, a patient who did receive just sunitin for the treatment of his disease and who responded quite well, as shown in this slide, also on the brain. Non clear cell histologies. A very complicated and variegated uh, uh, clinical situation, but we have uh, at least four phase two studies. We are talking indeed about uh, a relatively rare patient population showing that sunitinib may be active almost in every histotype, non clear cell histotype. Of course, again, the results achieved are inferior in absolute values as compared to the results achievable in clear cell histologies, but nevertheless, a clear-cut evidence that sunitinib is active also in these uh, specific tumor histotypes. Let's move to the uh, indication of sunitinib according to patient-related characteristics. I'm going to briefly touch the issue of uh, kidney impairment and the issue of control hypertension. Of course, uh, patients with uncontrolled hypertension of severe cardiac disease are not candidates for a sunitinib treatment, but may be not candidate at all for an active treatment. Let's start from the patient undergoing dialysis. This is a rare patient group, subgroup, or nevertheless a, a quite important one because we know that, for example, dialysis increases the risk of kidney cancer. Then we have uh, this retrospective analysis uh, from uh, the Italian group showing that at the end of the day, in these patients, uh, the results achievable with sunitinib, and to be honest, also sorafenib in this case, in terms of progression-free survival, as well as overall survival, are absolutely in line uh, from, uh, with the results we can achieve in real world in a uh, patient population not undergoing dialytic replacement treatment. Hypertension. Hypertension is a very complicated issue because uh, we know from several papers that hypertension is a biomarker of efficacy of tyrosine kinase inhibitors activity, especially of those tyrosine kinase uh, drugs targeting the VGF, VGF receptors pathway. And we have a clear-cut evidence that uh, sunitinib-induced hypertension is uh, something that correlates with a better uh, prognosis uh, for patients with advanced kidney cancer. And then move to sunitinib indications according to disease-related characteristics. And I want to briefly touch uh, the uh, role of sunitinib when prior uh, targeted therapy is given, the role of sunitinib when the realistic treatment aim is to prolong survival, and when the realistic treatment aim is to maintain quality of life. Well, of course, uh, sunitinib is the most commonly used drug in the first line, but nevertheless, uh, we have uh, some retrospective data and few prospective studies ongoing that suggest that uh, sunitinib use uh, as a rich challenge treatment may be quite effective for advanced kidney cancer patients. That's clearly shown by this paper by Brian Rin's group. Again, the results uh, achievable are in absolute values inferior to the results we can achieve uh, uh, as a first-line treatment, but again, clear-cut evidence that rechallenge with sunitinib may give patients uh, uh, more progression-free survival advantage and benefit. What about uh, overall survival? We perfectly know that uh, the uh, registrative trial of sunitinib didn't show a statistically significant uh, overall survival benefit. But please take in mind that uh, that trial was not power enough to answer an overall survival question because the primary endpoint of the study was progression-free survival. 
Nevertheless, when uh, in an exploratory analysis, uh, the patients who crossed over from uh, interferon to sunitinib were censored, then uh, no overall survival benefit was observed and it was statistically significant, showing that uh, at the end of the day we can also improve overall survival with this drug. That is, at the end of the day, the ultimate goal of every cancer treatment. What about quality of life? This uh, uh, analysis shows that uh, sunitinib is able to significantly increase quality of life as compared to interferon, meaning that uh, its impact on patient's quality of life could be also positive. Of course, we know that uh, uh, sunitinib lose to pazopanib in terms of quality of life from the compass and past study, but nevertheless, don't be too worried about your safety profile. And not being too worried about your safety profile, it's also worthwhile after uh, that Sergio Bacarda at ASCQG presented this uh, retrospective Italian data suggesting that uh, modifying sunitinib schedule could lead not only to a definitely better safety profile, but also potentially, with all the biases coming from a retrospective analysis, uh, to a longer progression free survival, at least using the 2 1 schedule instead of the classical 4 2 schedule. So, to conclude, sunitinib is out of the market since uh, a long time, and we have gathered a huge amount of experience with these drugs really nothing to compare with any other drug registered to date for the treatment of advanced kidney cancer. Evidence to support sunitinib efficacy and safety in a number of clinical situations does exist, clearly suggesting its use in situations where no evidence of activity at all exists for other drugs, even though we are talking about uh, active drugs. Furthermore, we should also realize that the use of alternative schedules may contribute to ameliorate the safety profile of sunitinib, making this treatment feasible even when toxicity represents a priority issue. And at this point, and this is the main conclusion of my talk, today we can now say that almost every advanced kidney cancer patient is potentially an ideal candidate for sunitinib treatment. If not, probably we have to consider the idea of uh, giving this patient just best supportive care. Even though, of course, uh, this, doesn't, this does not mean that other drugs could not be regarded as reasonable alternatives for many, but, on, but, not, on, not, only, but on not all the uh, patient characteristics that uh, I considered in my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.